Okay, so I am uh, Brian Cardell. I'm from Egalia, developer advocate. And uh, we thought that it would be sort of fun and interesting for posterity to do some interviews with people about our MathML efforts. So uh, I'm here, here with uh, Neil, who is the uh, chair of the MathML Refresh Community Group. Uh, and we're going to have a conversation about MathML. Um, so Neil, like, I think a lot of people coming to MathML, hearing about it, uh, are, a lot of them are probably kind of new to it. Um, and I think they probably don't realize that discussions about math on the web go way back. And I know that you have been here for really a lot of it. Can you tell us a little bit for context of your history and the history of math on the web? Yeah, I was back. I was part of it from way back at the start, um, back uh, in the 1990s, even um, where I worked for Wolfram Research, and we were interested in promoting um, a web standard. There had been a little bit of work uh, on an initial standard that hadn't gone anywhere. It was very uh, minimal. And so we proposed something to the W3C that we'd start a group and they were uh, very favorable of that idea. So we convened uh, a number of people. We had a, a few conferences and workshops together and uh, yeah, it took a while, but in 1998, I think it was, we became the second um xml application out there uh on the web so it goes back quite a ways um so that was that was a long time ago and i was part of that and i've been part of the uh, community working on mathml ever since uh which makes me feel kind of old <laughs> yeah um i think really a lot of web standards have a, a long history um but the late nineties that like really puts it in perspective. Um, I guess historically it's been something of a roller coaster ride. Yeah. There, there've been all these periods of enthusiasm and that gets stamped down and, uh, it comes back up again. Um, you know, we had this proposal, it was 1998, it was accepted and that was great. It was, um, a compromise as um, most standards are and uh, it was huge because of that compromise so that was maybe a problem because that made it harder to implement another thing is as i said it was a xml application um, so we hitched our wagon to that uh, and that did not turn out to be the direction the web went in on on the other hand so did svg and svg has had a little bit more buy-in on the web than MathML has. Yeah, I'm glad you mentioned SVG because there's there's two really interesting things about this. Uh, one is that both MathML and SVG are uh, specifically integrated into the HTML parser later on, and uh, they're special in history. But also, like SVG, um, because of that aspect of it, MathML has this like really huge ecosystem around it uh, for editors and things to understand and transcribe it from handwriting analysis and pictures and all this really cool stuff. But browsers, I think, have been really like where the roller coaster ride has been, right? That that's right. Yeah, it's it's been a little strange that. Um all the browser implementation work has been done by volunteers. It hasn't been picked up by the browser vendors themselves directly. And that, I don't, I'm not sure why, you know, I could guess that maybe there's some math phobia on there or that, uh, you know, math wasn't their sexy thing to work on or whatever it was. I don't think anybody ever said, gee, this is a terrible standard. We don't want to do it. It just never seemed to be a priority to them. So, that was a that was a disappointment. I mean, we've we've seen ups and downs, uh, and I could get into that. Um, but yeah, it's used in so many places, as you indicated. It's used in publishing a, a lot because they really do like XML workflows in publishing. But on the web, it just hasn't gotten into the browsers in the way that other things are. It has been supported in various browsers over the years. Um, 
but yeah, right now it's making its comeback. So the roller coaster is on a big upswing, I think. Uh, it's sort of like my favorite bit of history is that Mathemel has been really the victim of just so much unfortunate timing. It has very little to do with like Mathemel itself, but about which browsers were popular at the time, which ones you had to get into. And then also um, the shift, as you said, from uh, XML and XHTML look like they're going to be the future. And then uh, it leaves W3C and goes into what WG as uh, HTML. Eventually it gets integrated into the parser. Um, there's just a whole bunch of really interesting things there about the unfortunate timing. Um, yeah, you, I mean, you've jumped through oh, probably two decades worth of time there. But yeah, initially, way back at 2000, uh, it's probably hard for people to remember even, the browser back then was IE. Um, maybe it was IE6 at that point or whatever. Um, and Design Science, a company I eventually joined, produced a, a, a plugin for IE called Math Player that... Um, supported MathML was great. Um, and Firefox was a very small percentage, but it was a percentage and people wanted cross-platform support. And they had a um, support for MathML, but it was for XHTML uh, documents only. I can't recall the reasons why it was XHTML only, but as you said, that seemed to be the trend uh, back then that maybe XML was the way things would go. It turned out not at all. Um, and uh, this created this incompatibility because IE did not support XHTML. Um, so we ended up hacking the IE plugin um, so that it would transform XHTML to HTML. And so now that was looking pretty good. We were all very positive at design science that we had solved this problem because now all you had to do was put out XHTML documents. But there wasn't an easy way to do that because most people were putting out HTML. And so there was confusion about this. And that lasted through probably about 2010 when Firefox finally supported HTML. But by that point, IE was falling away. Uh, they actually um, stopped supporting the interface that Math Player needed to use in order to work. Um, and Chrome was really getting to be popular. Uh, so a volunteer um, at that point uh, worked and got some pretty good success getting uh, a MathML implementation into Chrome. And so at that point, I think we were up to probably four browsers supporting MathML in one form or another. Uh, so things were looking really positive. I think there was a lot of excitement that Chrome was finally going to get it. It was now the dominant browser. But unfortunately, when there was a fork to uh, a blink off of it, um, they yanked it all out. There were issues maybe with security. But in the end, that was a really kind of a downside role to MathML support in browsers because the dominant browser no longer supported it. Uh, the support in IE had kind of uh, failed even as IE went away. Um, and yeah, it was a it was a kind of a, a bleaker period in MathML support. Um, there were a lot of people that were very upset about um, the Chrome support being yanked. It's I think ranked as the third, or maybe even the second um, uh, issue that is sitting there with the in the Chrome logs as people wanting it back. So there's definitely was a lot of people saying great things about MathML, but again. It, it just wasn't clear why it wasn't getting implemented in the browsers by the browser vendors. There is a little bit of a double whammy here, actually, as well. Um, another bit of unfortunate timing was right about approximately the same time that uh, the math support was removed. When Actually, when we say math support, too, we should say math rendering support more correctly because it, the the parser in all the browsers still parses MathML, especially. Um, but yeah, that's something I think that's really important is MathML did go into HTML5, um, but HTML5 basically defined how the parser was going to turn it into the DOM and did not say anything about you must render this DOM. Right. Right. 
um, it, it it just delegated that support to like supporting the rendering of MathML. But the the other the other sort of uh, I guess like double whammy or triple quadruple whammy <laughs> is right about the same time that uh, support was removed, maybe just before um, uh, a thing that I was involved in, the extensive web manifesto was published. Um, and it argues about how we move forward. Uh, and it distinguishes between existing high level features that make up the platform and new features. Uh, and th this actually played out pretty badly for MathML because, um, like which, which one is it? Um, because, yeah, I, I think uh, we, we I, lost. I completely in, agree. You're stuck in this limbo where you're not really supposed to add it on because it's already in there and yet it's not supported. So you really need to add it on, um, to catch 22. Yeah. It, it created a very, very difficult situation. And, um, because of the, the split, with uh, Blink, uh, we had not just Chrome, but also Opera became Blink-based. And so uh, like in a very short period of like maybe a week, um, the trend for MathML like really seemed to look increasingly bleak. Um, but here you are now and you're working with us again in the MathML core uh, specification in the MathML refresh community group, chairing it. And um, I just want to give you the opportunity to respond to this because I know a whole lot of people have asked me as I've talked to them about MathML. Um, well, uh, I mean, is it going to be any different this time? Like yeah. So, so I, as bleak as it looked in the browsers, it actually had a lot of uh, buy-in by publishers and it also had a huge amount of support in the accessibility community because that's what the screen readers would interpret. And that's what the um, uh, dyslexia tools, which wanted to do highlighting of math, um, that's what they interpreted. So there was a lot of non-browser based support for MathML out there and that support still exists. And there's still a lot of people that really wanna see the support become native. So although MathML itself wasn't supported in the browsers, um, there's a, um, a wonderful, very large library called MathJax, a JavaScript library that does support MathML. Uh, it also supports text. So um, there's a lot of math out there. Uh, and the nice thing about the um, MathJax library is that they hide the MathML because it can't be displayed, but they hide it in a way screen readers can see it. Wikipedia does the same thing. Khan Academy does the same thing. And in fact, I was just out helping my son with a calculus problem and needed to refresh my memory about how something worked. And I was looking at a bunch of web pages. They almost all used uh, MathJax or hid the MathML and um, uh, because they were rendered on the server and they were all accessible and they're all accessible because they're using MathML. So, uh, it's, it's there, it's just not being laid out in the browsers and, you know, as wonderful as the MathJax library is, it's a JavaScript library and there are just problems with JavaScript libraries, uh, um, besides, besides just load time interacting with other things. Um, so uh, I'm maybe losing the initial train of thought there, but it is it has a lot of support. And I think this time around, um, the Egalia work is really pushing it forward um, so that the rendering part of it shows up and the MathML that's been there all along goes back to being um, able to be put in a, a web page directly to be um, rendered. Um, and so, the support that uh, Agalia has given to the implementation and the support that the Chrome team has given Agalia uh, all makes me very excited about the future. Um, and uh, also the work the Agalia team has done to make the other browser um, engines um, consistent with this newer work on MathML 
um, that the refresh community is doing, um, I, I think it has all the signs of this time we really have it. Yeah, I, I agree with, um, <clears throat> I agree with, uh, the idea that this time is going to be different. Um, because not, not just we have the support and we have the implementers and the sort of, uh, good working relationship and everything, but because the MathML refresh community group, which you chair, um, took, took the time and actually answered all of the questions and concerns about that, that were lacking, um, because of this weird history, uh, there was a big gap like the MathML, even in the other browsers, it was like kind of underdefined how it would work in the browsers. Yeah. And... Yeah. So I, I mean, I, I do want a, a little defense of MathML, but also a strong defense of what the group is doing now is way back in 1998 um, when people wrote specs, the idea was the browsers would do their own innovation and interpret them in some way. They didn't want to write the specs that forced everybody to do exactly the same thing because there was a lot of innovation coming on. So if you put out a web page, um, it wouldn't look the same on one browser and exactly the same in one browser or another. And that was, I think, a goal back then because people wanted to um, see you know, what's the best way to do things. And that's changed dramatically. Now the goal is if I put out a web page, it should be the same everywhere. And the goal of the refresh uh, community group is to do that same thing for MathML. And so um, one of the things that we're doing with the um, MathML core work, which is the part that's going into a browser, is that we are looking at um, how MathML needs to integrate with CSS and doing the layout in terms of the CSS layout engines so that the MathML will lay out identically in every browser. We're pairing out the parts that are uh, problematic uh, and, and the parts that are not used very much, letting those move to a polyfill um, and still maintaining backwards compatibility that way. But the um, issues that made it difficult to implement MathML in a browser, we have looked at those and um, we have tried to make that not a problem and get everything to be identical everywhere so that MathML now fits in the way the web works nowadays. Yeah, uh, definitely. Uh, and also, I wanted to make sure that uh, you understood the context of my point because it was not in any way to... Uh, say something negative about MathML. It's that it comes from a, a like a co-evolutionary co past, right? Like it was evolving at the same time that HTML and the DOM and how we think about how we write up standards. Like, do do we write them in this way where they leave infinite room for browsers to interpret them in many ways, uh, or like do we write the words first and not really worry about the implementability of it. Um, so because of this, the, like the spec was not very in line with today's web platform. Um, and I think that the work that the MathML refresh community group has done to integrate it with, uh, CSS and the way that we think about units and like the roles of attributes and DOM nodes and, uh, uh, the Dom itself actually is my, my favorite one. Uh, and how, how we look toward the future and integrate with all the pieces I think is, uh, fantastic. I'm, I'm really enthusiastic about it. In fact, um, I'm one of the things that makes me very, very positive is as you say, we have some positive support and feedback from Google and patches have begun landing upstream in the past couple of weeks. Yeah, uh, I, 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 I mean, one of the things that I'm very enthusiastic about is that when the volunteer years ago tried to put MathML into Chrome, he told me it was like pulling teeth to get anybody to do a review of his code. And now these patches that are landing, I've seen, you know, very quick response. People are very excited to see this come in. You know, they have comments on how to do things better. 
but the interest is there. And I think that's a world of difference than before. And that makes me very, very positive about it happening this time around. So another thing that I wanted to ask about, uh, and you, you have actually answered it a little bit already. Um, when I talk to people about this, uh, a lot of them point to the fact that, like, as you said, there is a lot of math ML on the web today, or there's a lot of math on the web today, uh, even more than superset of math ML, basically. Um, it exists. You can see it. So kind of what what's the problem? Uh, why does it really matter to have native support um, instead of just having some amazing tooling that can turn it into images or SVGs or something like that? Yeah, so it's it's again this issue of standards. So once something becomes standards, people start to innovate more because they don't have to reinvent the wheel every time. So there are a number of math editors out there that have their own internal representations to draw the math. They tend to have, uh, except for the very large efforts like MathJax, they tend to have a number of rendering issues. When you start stretching things like parentheses, you might see gaps in them or they may not stretch very well at all, though may look really uh, funny. Um, and um, there are other issues is that when you start wanting to do interactions, because you don't have a standard underneath to draw, what one person uses can't be built upon by someone else because they render it a little differently um, using divs and spans in different ways and playing different tricks to make things look okay. Um, and so once you get that standardization, suddenly you get the ability to work off, you know, essentially to stand on the shoulders of others and stuff um, happens much better. So whereas you might see some uh, wonderful work like uh, Desmos has some very nice interactive stuff. It's Desmos only, and it's not going to work. I can't export it to anybody else and have it do much of anything other than that they support export and import for MathML. But I'm not able to export or use their uh, interactivity in any particular way. So I, I see the standardization allowing all sorts of innovation to really take off as opposed to them being one shot efforts that um, can't integrate with each other and can't build on, uh, upon each other. I think there's also a really strong case to be made here that math is text um, and text is sort of the web's thing. <laughs> um, and Putting text into images and things is not, it seems very weird. Um, trying to think about how you manipulate the rendering of text itself with JavaScript without some other like really core fundamental primitives that are currently not there. Um, it, it feels bad, right? Um, and it feels worse to me even that this uh, is sort of almost discriminates against this one particular kind of text, which is fundamentally important to STEM and the origins of the web. And I think society, I, th I think there's sort of a, like what should the web be and do for, uh, I don't know, ethical reasons, I suppose is maybe the, the, thing I'm trying to say here. What, what do you think? Yeah, I mean, I, you know, there's, you could do, look at all these studies that talk about um, STEM being important for uh, people to get good jobs, to um, understand the world better. There, you know, there's lots of things about STEM and when it becomes harder for education to put out math on the web, that's just the blockage for people to learn it and become more proficient in it. And it does seem like a disservice to a core part of, I mean, not, you know, not just math, but it's, it's science and engineering and medicine and all sorts of areas that it's just harder to collaborate in um, because there's no easy way to put the math out or, you know, uh, there's no way to build upon these things. So yeah, it, 
it's always bothered me. Um, I've had a phrase that uh, every kid in um, from kindergarten through 12th grade has to take a math class. And whereas uh, everybody uses the web these days for regular text, math has been a kind of backward area. Um, maybe four years ago now, Wikipedia finally buried the math ML inside of the math that it generated. So it was at least accept, uh, accessible, but it's still not as rendered as nicely as the regular text in Wikipedia. And there's just no, you know, rationale for why math should be held back that way. Yeah, I think, I think, uh, basically we make it hard and we make you think about, um, make you think about things that you don't generally have to think about for text, uh, like flash fun style content, like dragging down the performance of your page, like potential failures in which you get something that is like gibberish on your screen. So I think that is really interesting. You hit on in your earlier statement just now and a little bit before too, um, that you sort of a standard lets you stand atop that and do interesting new things. Um, so I'm curious, like, do you have any particular hopes for what kinds of things, a universal standard, highly interoperable math on the web would have? Well, I, th I think there's a, a lot of, um, possibilities for interactivity. So people have written some editors. For the most part, they're not as powerful as they could be if they didn't have to spend so much effort trying to figure out how to get the rendering done. I think they could spend more effort on the interactivity. Um, there are people that have done you know, great things. I mentioned Desmos. They're uh, nice graphics, uh, uh, nice interactivity and stuff. But it's a, it's a world unto itself because they're not building upon a spec. And so that Desmos application, I can't just pop it into something else. It's, it's there, it's by itself, and that's the way it is. Um, and that's unfortunate. Uh, there's a, 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 a ecosystem called Jupyter Notebooks, which is a sort of a Python into the web. Uh, and that has become very popular. Uh, math, I think, still remains a bit of a problem there because, again, MathML is not really there. But the nice thing about Jupyter Notebooks is I have the data there. I have programmability. I can produce graphs. I can produce tables. I can manipulate the data in various ways and send that off to my colleagues. And they look at it and they have that data there and they can do their own thing. But you can't do that really with the math, because if I ever want to do something with the math, I kind of got to pull it out to its own little application because it's not a standard that's really supported everywhere. So it's to to look at some of these isolated things and say, yeah, well, if I could just put them all together, then I'd have this really neat little thing that I could start doing and maybe I could, you know, uh, take my handwriting and pump it over here and I don't have to type and do that. And then I take it out there and I manipulate it again by doing a little bit more handwriting and crossing things out and so forth as I would do on a pencil and paper. You just can't do that where everybody has to implement their own version of how to lay the math out. There's just no standard that people can depend upon that works across all the browsers. So I, there's, you know, once you start thinking about the interactivity, you can start thinking about what about an education? What kind of neat interactivity things can I do? And there's some specialized programs that use their own specialized tools to do that. But again, they don't build upon each other. And it's, it's such a sad state that everybody has to go and reinvent the will every time they want to do something with math. So I, I, I'm, I'm very excited that once MathML support gets in there, we're going to see all sorts of really interesting applications um, come up because people will be able to take advantage of what's there and what clever things one person has done and incorporate that into the work that they're doing and not have to reinvent that part of it. Yeah, I think actually 
for me, one of the things that's really interesting about the, the things that you said there is Math Jacks itself. Um, because uh, I think people hear us uh, talk about wanting a native standard and why maybe Math Jacks isn't like the right final answer for this problem. And they get the impression that we think Math Jacks is good or is bad. Um, personally, Math Jacks is good because it's enabled all these things um yeah i, but, I you know i want to i want to say absolutely i think math Jax is wonderful it's right. allowed math to show up on the web um and the people that have done it have done a great job um with the rendering and uh i'm 100 behind them it's just they had to spend a lot of effort on things that they really didn't shouldn't have had to spend effort yeah. on. Yeah, no, this this is exactly going to the point that you were saying that I was trying to pull back into, which was um, uh, MatchX actually does, like they have explored considerably more than simply the rendering part, right? Yeah. Um, and, and so really, I think a lot of the work that we've done in MathML Core is to help enable them to continue to do that, but just not worry about the rendering um, because uh, they're, seems like a lot of the people who were involved with math jacks are now uh working with like my coworker joni the editor of aria with you um how like how can we make mathml exploration interactive and like more accessible and explorable and uh, i think there's like lots of great things that they can do if they can stand on top of a standard uh where a whole bunch of the problems that like a lot of us see with the current state of things are, are just resolved, right? Like the, the library gets smaller. You don't have these like worries about like, when does your page render text and reflow and how much JavaScript you have to load to just see the thing. Um, I just think all of that gets a lot better if we give them a really good foundational core on which to build. Yeah, I, I mean, one of the things I've mentioned, I mentioned before, as I've been involved in accessibility, and accessibility is a really big deal using math ML. And way back in Math Player, I added the ability to synchronize the speech and highlighting because for people with dyslexia, it's been shown that if you highlight a word, it helps focus them uh, as you speak it um, so that they can read the math better. Um, and there's studies that show that actually math reading is. Uh, twice as hard or they make twice the number of errors that they do in reading regular text. Um, and and without a standard for how do I pick out the part that I'm going to highlight, that synchronized highlighting has kind of been lost for the last decade um, because math players no longer doing the rendering. And I think once math ML gets to be back as the standard way of displaying things, we'll get back to being able to support something as basic as highlighting the math as it's spoken, um, just as it's done for text now by the various um, tools that help people with dyslexia. Yeah, I think, I think all of this is really, really great. Um, I, th I think one of the things that's like, uh, mm, probably hard for a lot of people to appreciate. It certainly was difficult for me to appreciate um, before getting involved with uh, standards and even the MathML work uh, is just how difficult text rendering actually is and to do it in line with the browser in the way that the browser thinks about it and flows it and when it processes it and participate in all the rules and everything. Um, I was talking to a, a friend here in Pittsburgh um, who is like very well known for design. Um, and the two of us were just thinking about how recently it seems we've gotten a lot more information about just how difficult the rendering of text is and how magical we've made it and how that, that is, such a nice thing that you you don't have to think about just how much complexity is there yeah i i mean i i've i completely agree it it's it's taken for granted um i think most people think you just are like well i 
just laying out some text. Maybe there's bold, maybe there's italic. It's just going to wrap around the lines. I mean, how hard is this? But in fact, making it look nice and, you know, at the very lowest level, having a nice looking font that's going to render cleanly on various displays of different resolutions um, and be clear, that's incredibly hard stuff. And to me, the layout of math is so much easier than that. People have put in so much work to make um, text look nice on a screen. It it just pales in uh, the amount of time they spend in uh, on doing that than what it's taken to do the math stuff. And we all take the text for granted. And we, I think people think, oh, laying out the math is so hard. But once you have a font that you know, can do the type of things math needs to do. And that includes being able to stretch things like parentheses um, and and uh, other characters, arrows and whatnot. Once you have that, the math layout is relatively quite simple um, to sit on top of all that work that other people have done. Yeah, I'm, I'm really excited to see, uh, to see all this stuff land and to also like imagine the larger impact on society in uh, like a long time. I think that this has uh, like good, good potential for a lot of positive things. Like you mentioned Jupiter notebooks and things like that, that are exploring. I think it would be fantastic if uh, well, not it would be, it will be fantastic <laughs> when the web is able to uh, 30 years uh, basically, uh, from its inception at CERN, uh, be able to really meet the use cases that they had at CERN at the time. Yeah. And that, you know, when you think back to where it all started, as you said, back at CERN and, you know, this is a scientific thing. Uh, Tim Berners-Lee was a physicist. He wanted to put out his stuff and that still remains a little bit problematic how he can do that. And that's a little strange, but, I'm really, really excited that that problem after 30 years, as you say, will looks like it's going away. Um, and to see, to make it so easy that people can do their research I, is a great thing. Um, and uh, I'm really happy to be part of pushing that forward. And I'm really glad you're part of that effort too, because you've been a great uh, help also. Thank you. And, uh... Thanks for spending the time to talk to me. Uh, I think this was a fun chat that we had and uh, hopefully people find it interesting. Well, thanks for uh, inviting me to do the chat. Um, hopefully some people uh, learned a little bit about the history of MathML and why it's gone uh, up and down in the past and why uh, this time it's finally going to catch. Yeah, excellent. Thanks, Neil. All right, thanks. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.